Hey guys, this is Sam and Anthony with RG Reviews again. Today we're going to talk about reliability, durability, and quality of firearms. We had an experience at the range this weekend which totally devastated Savage Steven's shotguns and I think pretty much both of our minds. Now I'm just saying shotguns for right now because I have a Savage bolt action rifle that's okay but um, man we just had some issues, some unacceptable uh, failures, not just an issue, it was, they're both straight up failures of product. Um, especially, I mean, it, it, it really gets under our skin because these model of shotguns are put out at a very affordable price. They're designed and built around home defense. As you can see, the two that failed were actually both straight Savage Stevens brands. Up top you have an H&R Partner, which is almost exactly like the Savage Stevens 350. Yeah, and the Mavi 88 down here, which is different from all three of those. Um, now, as far as the test of time has stood up, the Mavi 88 and the H&R Partner have been pretty damn good, right? Yeah, they've been pretty good. Now, I noticed that the same problem I was having with my shotgun, where the, the spot weld, where the forend is held on, both the the other Savage Stevens 350 and the H&R Partner have the exact same design, which that loses my hurts my confidence a little bit in the H&R Partner. Which also makes me think, I've had good enough luck with the H&R Partner. Maybe I just got a Lemon 320. And maybe, just by pure coincidence, we both had our shotguns out on the very first day. And this happened to be a brand new shotgun out of the box. With I mean, I'm serious, I had less than 50 rounds into this thing before it just broke. And I wasn't even one who broke it. So I can't even feel good about that. Like <laughs> Someone else had it break on them. Uh, but the thing is, is somebody's life might have been in these people's hands. Uh, the, and by these people, I mean the manufacturer of the gun. They, someone's life could have... Um, Prematurely been ended. Yeah, it could have been lost because your 4N broke and you couldn't rack a shell in. Or you couldn't eject a shell yeah. after you had to shoot one. Uh, I mean, and the thing is, is I, I can't emphasize enough... We can't emphasize enough, because Anthony was the one who pointed this big fact out at first, was that these are primarily designed for home defense. They're not, they're not dressed up for fun. These are 18 and a half inch sh or barreled shotguns, 5 plus 1. Neither one of those are really, none of these are really designed for hunting anything other than two-legged creatures coming into your home. Yeah. And... The first, uh, with under two, I mean, any failures under 500, okay, that's understandable. But for in under 500 rounds, two Savage Steven shotguns to break well under 500 rounds is unacceptable. And this wasn't a failure. Like, this wasn't just a momentary failure. These are broken. Like, you cannot use these reliably. What's messed up when you think about it is the fact that... Uh I mean, like you were saying, both shotguns have less than, I mean, honestly, less than 100 rounds. Like, I've put maybe around 100 rounds through my uh, Model 350, and, uh, I, you know, it was running fine. It felt like a really great gun. I was really pleased with the product. I mean, I like the finish. I like the stock. I like the sights. The pump was smooth. It's light. holds five in the tube. I mean, well, I mean, what what can't you like about that? It has ghost ring sights with a, uh, you know, with the fluorescent front end. So, I mean, it's just... This is a sweet shotgun, but then, you know, you take it out and you start shooting it, and that's when you start seeing problems. Um, you know, same thing with uh, Sam's Model 320. I mean, the first few shots that we took out of the gun, I mean, everybody that shot it just looked at each other and was like, wow, this is a really nice shotgun. Like, it's really smooth, and I mean, the recoil was nothing in the gun. Like, especially concerning it's a 12-gauge. I mean, the recoil on my, on my 350 was less, it was more than the recoil on the uh, 320. It just seemed like it was going to be a really great shotgun. Yeah, it, I was really disappointed that it didn't function, man. Because it was really fast and smooth, too. Yeah. But I, you'll see in another video exactly what happened on the break. The way it was, the way all three of these four ends are constructed, instead of using a double rail setting inside of an actual four end, like Mossberg 500 does, Remington 870, Winchester probably does the same thing, I'm not sure. Um, but that just seems to be a design that works. They have, I don't want to say these don't work because I have two working four ends here. It just seems like the way they have it set up is not the most secure design. I'm not going to say it doesn't work, but it's spot welded around a ring 
like a ring is spot welded to the barrel or to like a little sheath that goes over the barrel and then that is actually connected to the rails Maybe you can show them. yeah I can show you okay this is what happened my dad went to go shoot it he went to rack it around in and then did this you know it just kind of went free and then I mean when he pulled up that's when we noticed the problem upon further inspection Oh, another thing, this came out of the box like this, little loose swing swivel stud. I wasn't too impressed with that, but I was like, hey, things happen. You know, it was their floor model one. Uh, man, I just had such high hopes for this. I had such a cool, cool setup for a bolt and whatnot. But as you can see, there is a... Uh, this little inner tube here, this actually comes out of the forend, and on the sides here are where these rails are what looks to be spot welded, an extremely light weld. Uh, like that's actually one of the weld spots. That's, yeah, that's actually one of the weld spots right there. That I actually turn the tube inside the forend to look at it, and that's what one looks like. And it welds together right here. Like that's how it sits. Probably easier to show you. If you can see the ends of these two rails that sit around this cover, which then mounts onto your uh, your magazine tube, why not just embed them into the forend or put little little retaining pin or little retaining bumps like even the Mav 88 I'm not completely happy with that for him because I can't change it out like a Mossberg 500 but I mean god GD like <laughs> I'm trying to be like I'm trying not to be filthy mouthed about this but I have you know lots of lots of bad words come to mind when I think about this because if this ran reliably the first day you know, when I put about 150, 200 rounds through it, it was going to be my go-to shotgun. And let's say I put 250 rounds through it, and round 251, it decided to do that, and 251 was meant for somebody trying to break into my house and or hurt my family. Like, that would have been a serious issue. I would have had to go to my pistol, and 12 gauge is cheaper than 9 mil right now, so <laughs> depending on your loading. Another thing that's a, that's really a big disappointment between all three of the shotguns is that when you look at them, if you'll notice a theme going on, you have the uh, HR Partner, the Stevens Model 350, Stevens Model 320, and the uh, Mossberg Mav 88. They're all under two hundred dollars. You can pull, you can take all of these home. You know what I'm saying? Each one of these home for under two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And I mean, be sitting pretty with what you think is a nice home defense piece. But then I mean, if you get those malfunctions, I guess you've just been pretty much screwed. I'm going to show you something here. This is the problem on the uh, this is on the uh, Stevens Model 350. If you'll notice, the slide works just fine. By the way, this is completely empty. If you'll notice that the slide works just fine. Everything seemed like it was good. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it to malfunction for you exactly like it malfunctioned the first, you know, 50 times that it did it, but. And we have that on video of it actually doing it too. Yeah. We'll either we'll either meld it up with this video or we'll put it in another one that says in field uh, in field malfunctions. But basically, what was going on is this: when I pulled the <laughs> when I pulled the slide back to extract the shotgun shells, you notice this is a rear, this is a bottom eject shotgun. It just got stuck. Sand like it came out that time, but it was solid 100% stuck and the worst thing was that it would be around stuck in the tube stuck in the barrel and then when I try to feed another round in it would feed up and now it would be stuck behind the round that had fired but wouldn't be that wasn't getting pulled out of the uh, chamber so the extractors are failing when it's trying to pull on the, the uh, rims of the shotgun shells so now you have a round in there in the tube which totally makes your gun inoperable you're screwed I mean there's no clearing that malfunction you know, sitting behind what you hope is something solid that bullets aren't going through at the Especially time. Especially in, in a weapon that doesn't usually have a cleaning rod anywhere near or around it. Yeah, it's just... At least with an AK, you can rip the cleaning rod off the end and shove it down the barrel as fast as you can. But with this, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, this is basically what happened with it. 
you'd have a round stuck in the tube just like this. You'd have to take the cap off from your magazine off your magazine tube, turn your barrel, quarter turn, take it out. Now you have to get an operating rod or a, uh, a cleaning rod and ram it up in there or you have to get something that you can grab a hold of the lip of this and work it out side by side until you get the round out. You know, but I mean, by the time all that happens, I mean, you're screwed. This is something that, I mean, it didn't kill me to do it at the range, except for it was doing it, you know, every other shot. So, I mean, it's not even shootable. I mean, I guess the frustration should be, should be there. You know, you should be frustrated when something like this goes on. We're going to return to, Sav to Savage. We're going to send them into Savage, and we're going to see what Savage does about it. So hopefully here within the next month or so, We'll have another video coming up where we'll update you on exactly what we decided to do with the weapons and or what Savage decided to do with the weapons. Now I'm going to send mine back and I'm hopefully going to get them to work on the extractors and see if they can get it fixed. Uh, Sam I think is still up in the air but he's more leaning towards he's just going to send it back and ask for a refund. Yeah, it, it just really depends. I'm going to do a little more research and see how much end problem these have. Maybe I can see if they offer another model maybe for around the same price with a different design. but. I mean, but here's the problem is I have the other, <laughs> the yeah, other design for the same exactly. price. So, I mean. Exactly. Uh, I mean, what's what's crazy is I'm, I've had two shotguns for under $200 for a very long time. I mean, and I've had more than one of them. You know, I've had two Mav 88s, actually. I got rid of one, and that one had well over a 1,000 through it. I know personally, and the only problem I had with that was I had jammed up on me when I got a whole bunch of sand in it when I was down by a river and uh, and then my other Mav 80 I've had now hasn't had a single issue and the H&R partner really hasn't had a single issue and that's I mean so I don't want to say don't buy any $200 shotguns but I mean stay away from Savage Stevens now hopefully uh, and really again I don't want to even say stay away from Savage Stevens uh, just because we might have really gotten unlucky like stuff like this happens the coincidences happen you know yeah. meteors kill people all the time kind of thing but I mean to be honest though it's just kind of spooky that it happened twice you know what I'm saying in the same day to two shotguns from the exact same company <laughs> I mean I mean what did your dad say made in the People's Republic of China yeah they're made the in China PRC, man. but I mean Another thing that's irritating is you got to think of it like this. A shotgun, you go to a shotgun's power level because you need to stop a threat immediately. I mean, a pistol is a great home defense, self-defense weapon. They say you need to fight your way to a rifle. Well, you know, a lot of times a rifle is not a good choice inside of a home, especially if you have other people living with you or neighbors close by. So, I mean, you're stuck with, I mean, I guess you're not stuck with, but you can either choose the Mossberg, Maverick, or the HR Partner. Right now, I would say that neither of these two shotguns are viable options for, for home defense, self-defense, or even range use. I mean, honestly. Like, They're not even fun. They're not aggravating. Fun. So, I mean, you go from, you know, a shotgun, which if you get a good solid hit with a shotgun, you pretty much know you're all right. You're going to make it. I mean, to self-defense. Glock 22. I'd rather I mean, have twice the price. I'd rather have a 410 single shot over either one of those right now. Like, as far as guns that shoot and will shoot, a 410 breakover is rating better to me than these right now, than what, what I know about them, than those two. I have a J.C. Higgins 16-gauge bolt-action shotgun at my home that I guarantee you, even if, it, even if this gun gets fixed and sent back to me, I will grab that shotgun before I grab this one. I mean, it's, it's pretty sad. But what's well, really frustrating is... That's Anthony's only 12 gauge. He went out and bought a whole bunch of stuff. Brought off 250 rounds with the 12 gauge and skeet. Yeah. Out to the range to go shoot. Like, I brought more 12 gauge than I brought any other caliber of ammo. Like, I planned on going out and shooting 250 rounds of shotgun today. What's what's messed up is they're not just damaging their own name, but they're they're damaging every other very, very, I don't want to say inexpensive. Low, inexpensive 12 gauge shotgun out there. When you're putting a bad taste in people's mouths, mouths for inexpensive shotguns, which isn't the case. I guess, honestly though, here's here's how I really see it though. For me, and I know Sam's view is going to be different on this, but for me, I mean, I might get the Stevens fixed, and I might one day think about getting a uh, Mav 88, but probably the next shotgun I get is going to be a uh, Remington 870. It's a good shotgun. And I mean, I'm going to go ahead and get a, a nice one, and if I don't get a Remington 870, maybe I'll find a 
you know, just a used Model 1300 or a Mossberg 500 or a Mossberg 590, which I saw for 400 bucks in nickel plate. I mean, twice the price, but I mean, if it works. Next one I get is probably going to be a double barrel coach gun with two triggers and two hammers. Yeah. Yeah, I want he another coach gun. He went the uh, double barrel coach coach gun route with Stoger. I went fancy. Four hundred and twenty five dollars for a limited edition Stoger coach gun with like a special shiny finish or something like that. Yeah. It was a beautiful gun, but it kept double firing, which you know you think, oh, cool, you know, it shoots both barrels at once. Not too cool. Not cool. Not just not just are you using an extra round when you don't plan to, which means you might not have a second shot if you need it, but if you've ever been just surprised with a round of double lot and you're not expecting it, or surprised with some three inch you know, magnum stuff and you're not expecting it, try being surprised by two of them at the same time and you are definitely not expecting it. Not fun. Not fun. Alright guys, well, I will let you guys know that I did put a surefire on the Mav 88 using a UTG uh, tri-rail. Which those work pretty well. I like them. For cheap rails. Cool. Yeah. It's the UTG, or the, uh, I think it's the Millennium Surefire. It's, Surefire makes me angry. I know they can last through a lot of stuff, but like two hour run time, come on. Really? It's a tactical flashlight. I want like eight hours. Yeah. I'll sacrifice some lemons. <laughs> I will. Eight, two hours? Run your light 30 seconds at a time. But in in a real, like, tactical application, those are almost, I mean, almost too bright to use. You're going to destroy your night vision. It's really only good for room clearing, I would think. Home defense, pretty much. Which no, is I what mean, room even, clearing comes down to me. So yeah, and even, even in home defense, do you really want to light that bright? Showing everybody where you're at? It just depends. But. All right, yo. We haven't gotten to give a bad review yet. Yeah, but this is this, <laughs> this is our first this is sad one. one. This messed up. We were about to do a review on. <laughs> we on, were so uh, stoked talking about, about the review on both the partner and the, uh, or not the uh, partner, but the, both the Stevens. So we were like, hey, we both got Stevens now, and they're yeah. both kind of tactical style shotguns. It's going to be a lot of fun to shoot these and then get a review out there. But nope, <laughs> no, nope. we didn't even get to shoot them. So I mean, a little bit, but not enough that you could ever From do a review. From what I on shot it. of it, I loved it, but uh, I mean, can't shoot it now. Yeah. All right, guys. We're just showing you what's going on. Uh, hopefully, Savage will take care of us, and uh, I'll let you know. And, and make then, it right. yeah, we'll let you know. And I'll tell you what. First, first go around. I'm going to get. I'm going to get it replaced. And then we're going to take it a thousand rounds of 12 gauge out to the shooting range in one day. I'm going to do it. I will reload that. that what two hundred times? I have two hundred and fifty at my house that I can't use right now, so they'll be there for you. Yeah, I have I have about a thousand in my closet. I know that, but that's two hundred reloads between Anthony and I, hundred apiece. I'm sure we can get it done in six or seven hours, <laughs> at least. A thousand rounds. Yeah. I'd say we could do it in under a couple hours. Probably. But yeah. it's cool. We'll see what's up, man. We'll we'll keep you guys updated yeah, on it. Just for right now, I would just generally stay away from Stevens. Yeah. So. And if if we get them back, we're gonna we're not gonna be nice in our next review. We're gonna immediately start doing oh, stressful I'm things. I'm nitpicking. <laughs> Anything <laughs> that bothers me is gonna is gonna I'm be. I'm tempted a to ask them just to give me the model with ghost strings. Like, hey, listen, it's the least that you could do. Pretty sweet. Yeah, that 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 shotgun with ghost strings would be awesome. God, it just feels like feels like I bought a Lego gun and it just snapped the pieces in my hands. <laughs> Peace, guys.